Next.js 15 has been released and these are the 10 features that I really love about this update. So the first one is they have introduced this CLI that allows you to update Next.js applications or the React version in them to the latest version. And before I could actually make fun of the React developers that they don't really even have a CLI. I can't do that anymore. Damn you, Vercel. Anyways, the way you use it is to define the code mod and this canary is the version of code mod and this is the version that is of Next.js. For example, this could be a specific version or you can just say latest and then it would update to the next stable latest version or the latest stable version. The second thing that I want to talk about is the async request API, which is a breaking change as well. So traditionally, when you do server side rendering, the server has to wait for the request object before it starts rendering anything at all. In this particular case, they have changed it to the way that it doesn't have to if the request is not dependent on the headers or cookies, the data which is request specific. This made it so that the headers, cookies, params and search params now are asynchronous, which means that previously you did not have to use await before those. Now you need to do that because now they are promise based. Now you could also use this code mod command to update your routes to use that, or you can click this upgrade guide and go through the upgrade guide. I'm going to quickly show you an example of what it was before and after. So here, when we used to use params, we would just use them just like this inside the function. So even though this is an async function, you would not have to use a wait here. Now that you have an async function here, you need to use a wait on the params to actually get the value out of them. The third thing that we are looking at is changes in the caching. So by default, when there was a request or a get request for a particular page, and you have not specified any caching strategy, it would by default use the force cache, which means that it would first try to fetch the response from the Next.js cache. And if it doesn't exist there, then it would get from the server and then update the cache. Now, what has changed is that it uses the no store option, which means that it would always go to the server and then would fetch the latest request. So it would not use cache at all unless you have specified it. So this means that Unlike in Next 14, how we had force cache, the Next.js 15 has no store as by default. And if you still want to preserve the current behavior, you have three different options. You can either use on individual fetch calls, the cache option set to force cache, which means that it is going to use the cache. And if nothing exists in the cache, then it would go to the server. The second one is on the route level. So on the dynamic configuration, you can mention force static. So this is for a single route and it would say for static for all the requests on the route, unless and until you have specified something else for a particular call in there, or you could do it on the layout level. So when you use the fetch cache in the route configuration option on a layout, if you use default cache, this would override all the fetch requests in a layout or the page to use the force cache unless explicitly specified on the cache option inside a fetch call. The fourth thing we are talking about here is react 19. And this is still in its release candidate stage by the React team. So React 19 is not stable, but Next.js team has adopted it still because they say that they have closely worked with the React team and they have found no issues whatsoever and whatever the core APIs are, are well tested as well. So it includes React 19, which means that going forward in the upcoming, even in the minor versions, it is quite possible that we will have the React 19 as stable, which is always a good thing. With that said, it's also important to notice that this update on React 19 is still is backward compatible with React 18. So the next JS would still support that. And if you're using the pages router, that would still be working just fine. However, in this little note here, they do mention that the recommendation is still is to migrate to the app router as fast as possible and just letting go the pages router completely. The fifth thing that we have is the React compiler. And this is very much in the experimental stage right now. And it's built by the React team at Meta. And what this allows us to do is to write lesser code and maintain lesser code by removing all the optimizations that we as React developers did using something like use memo or use callback. The React compiler understands all of that so we can yeah, write lesser code, which is always a good thing. The sixth thing that we have is hydration. And this is something that almost all the frameworks are working heavily on. So the improvements that have been made here in Next15 is the errors that are shown on hydration conflicts or issues. So by default, hydration error would happen if you have a difference in what the server rendered and what the client is rendering. So if there's a huge difference in them or even some important conflicting difference, 
it's going to show an error. So previously it would just say initial UI does not match what th was rendered on the server, which kind of makes sense if you know what you're doing, but not clearly. Now in next 15, this has become much better because they have added some examples. For example, you might have used type of window not equals to undefined, or there is a date dot now in your code, which essentially evaluates different when it's rendered on the server and on the client and further things as well. I think this is much better. So developers don't really go too much on Stack Overflow or Reddit and get bashed and then question their life choices. The seventh thing that we have is Turbo Pack. And now it's stable and ready for production. And we know that Turbo Pack has been talked about quite a lot according to how it improves the overall bundle size and the performance and the build times. So the virtual team says that it increases up to 76.7% faster local server startup when you do next dev. It also has 96.3 faster code updates with the fast refresh that Next.js has. And also the initial route compilation without caching is 45, almost 46%. I think this is really good. And while it may not affect like a really small application, even though it should, for enterprises, I think this is a huge win. If you can save 50% of the time, I think that's amazing. The eighth update that I really like is the unstable after, which is an experimental feature. Now, imagine that you are actually getting a lot of requests on your server and you want to log them or send some information to, I don't know, Google Analytics or some analytics tool and maybe send the errors to Sentry or some other tool. In that particular situation, does the user have to wait for you to do all of that to get a response back? Not really. We should send back the response or the rendered HTML as soon as possible. And these are the things, for example, logging, etc. They can be done later on as well. That's why they have introduced this experimental after function, which can be used just like this. So in your components, you can put this function and anything that you put here would essentially be triggered after the server has responded back to the client, either with an API response or if you're rendering something. So that's really nice. The ninth thing that we have is ESLint 9. What a coincidence. So they've added ESLint 9 support in Next 15, which is sort of following up the, you know, end of support for ESLint 8. And I really like this because now our IDEs can work with the latest and greatest ESLint. We can configure that well, and we can also find bugs before we actually build our application. So I think that's going to be really, really nice. So keeping things up to date is one of the things Vercel is doing a really good job at. And finally, the 10th update, which actually includes further sub updates. So a lot of improvements in the development and build processes. For example, we have server components, hot module replacement. So previously, if you saved a file which had a server component, it would regenerate the HTML, but also would make the API calls as well. Now, imagine if you're using third party APIs, for example, OpenAI or any other API calls where you have a limited quota of your API calls per month, you don't really want to waste all of that while you are actually developing. So what happens now is that those fetch calls or those API calls would be cached and would not be re-triggered when you are working in dev mode. Super cool. Another thing that they have upgraded is the faster static generation for the app router. Now we know that app router was introduced in Next 13 and has been the recommended way to go forward. But when generating static content, what the compiler would do is that it would run the rendering twice one for getting the client data for navigation and second for the initial app route or the initial page visit so to say now it does it only once and especially if you have a fetch call in the particular route and you have not explicitly said to use no store then it would also cache that as well which is really nice and that's pretty much it those are the 10 updates that i really like about next.js 15 i want you to let me know which one do you like the most i mean there's so many right it's really hard to pick from but which one is your favorite from this release and if there's something that you want me to talk about let me know in the comments as well as always happy coding and i see you in the next one